14 inch speed cut nano thank you dan mcburney for sending it we'll try it out it has the uh kind of homeowner anti-kickback nonsense on it but i think it'll do okay The angle of the spur mm -hmm. on old spurs is really steep. It's less tweak on my knee. Anyway, that's why I wear old spurs. I tried the new ones. I tried the distals. I tried the geckos. Mm -hmm. I tried the steins. Couldn't wait to put on my old ones again afterwards. Yeah. And I'm okay with it. They're heavy. They're steel. They match my harness. <laughs> Don't leave your gear in the rain. But it makes a nice sequence of story flow it's worth it all right nano let's see how you do so far so good nano nothing wrong with that So I'm going to put it on the back side of the tree looking down and it won't be crushed that way. It'll still get shocked hard and that can sometimes mess them up, but not this time. to know that you can do those things and then you know do them we're gonna have a contest and we're gonna give this away this monkey beaver 2.0 harness in the alice in wonderland cheshire cat theme i sewed this one up myself 
and it'll be for subscribers so we're gonna have I'm gonna have a subscription based class so if you subscribe to the class pay a monthly fee then there'll be prizes this will be just one of them I'll take you through making your own videos I'll have a live once a week to talk about any troubles you might be having and this is just for the people who subscribe to the workshop okay I think I've covered it all we're gonna give away this you give away a few other things do live videos explain how to make your own videos from what to buy uh, for cameras how to set your camera up how to edit video what to buy for editing camera placement and stuff like I was talking about today a whole lot of content that's gonna it's gonna take a while and it might be worth it for some of you and if it is then thanks for subscribing to that and I look forward to working with you more individually if you're into that so it's all about moving the camera around you just keep moving the camera keep moving the camera and the more you move the camera the better you show the sequence of the story and the more you change up the perspective which improves the watchability of it otherwise if it's one perspective constantly like one helmet or one point of perspective from a distance or close or whatever it just gets too monotonous and people have a short attention span so to improve the watchability you have to move the camera a lot and then of course there's adding cameras which starts to get more complicated but we're not talking about that yet so I'm gonna put this on the top so you get the perspective of the falling top but I'm only I'm only using one camera so that's the only perspective you get it's kind of a cool one so we'll do it it's important to put the camera somewhere where it's not gonna get obliterated and kill everything that you've got ruin all your footage destroy the camera and so I don't want it where it'll be crushed so I'm gonna put it on the back side of the tree looking down and it won't be crushed that way it'll still get shocked hard and that can sometimes mess them up but not this time so implied in not putting it where it'll get crushed is knowledge of what the piece is gonna do obviously you gotta kind of expect the way it's gonna land and what's gonna happen otherwise you ruin a lot of cameras probably ruin yourself too It'll be cool. It'll be a cool little workshop. There's a lot of people I think that want to do that. I'm going to show you with one camera only. Just you have a GoPro, you want to put it to use. All right, so basically to make an engaging, somewhat engaging video, you have to keep the camera moving, especially if it's only one camera. You know, you have one vantage point at a time. That means you have to move it around a lot. It's a little bit of a commitment to creativity to do it but it makes a nice sequence of story flow and so it's worth it Gentleman and a scholar. Nobody ever does that. Oh, really?